we look to see, do these things fit the mold of the program, understanding the times? And this isn't necessarily about prophecy, though really it could be. It's not about apologetics, though it could be. And, of course, current events. And that is what we're going to focus on with David Murrow, who is an author. He is the founder of Church for Men back in 2005. He uh, is very open about the fact he's not a pastor. He's not a professor or a theologian. He's just a, a guy in the pews that saw that there were more women than men, and he wanted to know why. So he began to research on this. He his books and articles have been uh, spotlighted in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, NBC Nightly News, Fox News Channel, and many, many more places. And he's walked many distinct career paths, and I think this is very important. He's a television producer, he's a book author, professional speaker, and a governmental spokesman. He's produced over 800 TV commercials, over 100 TV specials, and he's been a speaker all over the world in large and small congregations, many different sized venues concerning his book, Why Men Hate Going to Church. And we want to talk about that, of course, and that's going to be the key. He's also worked in Sarah Palin's campaign. He was her director of communications, so he's definitely been around. Well, David, according to what Eric just described in your bio, how does a media executive get involved with men issues, like this book you've written, Why Men Hate Going to Church? Well, actually, when you work in media, you realize that everything has a target audience. You know, there are entire TV networks that target women or men or different ethnic groups. And so I was just sitting in church one day and uh, looked around at the sanctuary and I saw the quilts and the banners and the flowers. And then I saw the pastor wearing a robe and a stole and he was talking about love and beauty and communication and relationships. And then I saw the programs for children. And, you know, in a moment of clarity, it came to me that, that just like a TV network, my church had a target audience and that target audience was middle-aged women. And, you know, the more I've studied Christianity and, and visited various churches, I realize that most churches unwittingly target women with their ministries, with their style, with the themes they choose to emphasize. You say that 60% of American congregations or thereabouts are female, and thus uh, we're having trouble reaching men. You also say that the, the church culture itself is what's driving men away. Give us your perspective why it's not user-friendly for men. Well, we send men a lot of signs. Uh, you know, as I said in the last response, the way we decorate that the themes we choose to emphasize, the softness, the softer side of Jesus, you know, these are really not as compelling to men as the raw Christ that we see in the Gospels. The preponderance of volunteers that we need in the church, we need people to work with children uh, in education, music, areas, you know, caring for the sick and the poor, areas where women have traditionally excelled and men have sort of taken a back seat. Leon Pottles, a theologian, has a great quote that I love to say. He says, the modern church, it's an army of women led by a few male generals. And uh, so I think what we found is that you know, we just the way we minister to folks and, and the things we choose to emphasize in the church really tend to attract more of a female audience. My wife and I often talk about how the younger generation, say under 40 or so, seem to be a little bit more effeminate than the older gentlemen. It, it, does that also influence those that are preaching and teaching in the church? I keep hearing this. I was doing a seminar in Texas a couple of weeks ago, and one of the pastors popped up a hand and said, you know, the younger men just don't seem to gravitate toward masculinity like the the older men did. But I point out the fact that even the young men, even the ones who are a bit more effeminate, more of what I call the coffee culture type guys, you know, who sit in coffee shops and play music and knit their own hats, these kind of guys, even they still watch Iron Man on the movies. They still play shoot 'em up video games. There's still something in their hearts that says, you know, I want to be bold. I want to be aggressive. And those coffee culture guys, they relate more to masculine things than to feminine things. So yes, it's true. This younger generation is not con as concerned about machismo. They're more accepting of things that, you know, the older generation would have seen as effeminate. But I still think there's that we're going to be more effective in reaching them if we put more of a masculine, or let's say if we take away the artificially feminine slant that we put on the gospel and on our ministries. 